What's up everyone? Aaron here. And today I'm taking a look at New Ages H19 and H20 Hogan and William Bonney. This is obviously New Ages take on G1 Braun and Outback. They're the same mold, just retooled into two different characters. And uh, they came packaged together, so I'm looking at both of them together. Alright, so here's the box they come in. Looks very similar to Flubber's box, including this little mini warrior graphic. But we just got product shots on the front. We've, they've recreated Braun getting killed on the uh, shuttle from the movie with Starscream leering back here, it looks like. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. You get instructions. Some of the things they don't tell you because these guys are a little finicky getting them into their alt modes, but we'll get into all that. So they both come with a weapon. This is the one they show. I mean, you can use either one in either hands. Obviously, it's your tool. You use it how you want. So, but um, this is supposed to be bronze, just a little black pistol. I don't know if I really remember Braun using a lot of guns, unless he was, you know, picking up Megatron's fusion cannon and blasting Decepticons with that. But, uh, yeah, obviously, as you saw earlier, he can hold that just fine. So. And then we've got Outback's gun, and it's a big old gun for a little mini bot. Got some nice molded detail throughout, but it's just in this white cast plastic again. And it's pretty reminiscent of his big old gun that came with his uh, G1 toy. So, he looks pretty cool with that, obviously. Now they both come with these little gas can weapons, as you can see here. I mean, I guess you can use them for whatever you want to pretend they are. But they do fold in half. And you have a peg there. That will fit into any of their hands, as far as that goes. So, I say that and it won't fit in his hand. It is tight in his hand. I don't know if I've ever really had it in Braun's hand, to be honest. I usually put his drill hand in there. I usually give it the other gun out back. But anyway, um, they can't hold them. Or at least Outback can. Uh, but speaking of the drills, so you get these three die-cast accessories. So you get Bronze Iconic Drill that he used in vehicle mode a few times in the cartoon. But he can also use this in his robot mode, and you can just fold his hand in like that. And just stick in his hand like he's holding it. And it does give the impression of him having a drill arm. So if you want to go with that look, that's pretty cool. So. Now you also get this piece. And it's just like a gripper hand thing. And uh, I don't know if I really remember Braun using anything like this. But it works the exact same way. But I did a little research and I have been re-watching my G1 DVDs and I re-watched the episode Cosmic Rust, which is the episode where Starscream uses a, he produces a hand utensil like this and pulls the uh, asteroid or meteorite chunk or whatever the hell it is that falls in, that gets embedded in Megatron's shoulder out with something very similar to this. And it fits in his hand perfectly fine. Just like it will with any other, you know. So, uh, yeah. So, I th actually think this might actually be an accessory for uh, New Age Starscream. And then finally, you get this circular saw in die-cast metal. And it's pretty cool, too. And again, I don't remember Braun really using this. Now, I do remember one time when Megatron uh, 
I can't remember the episode now, but it's in this first season where he produces something like this out of his hand and starts shooting these saw blade discs around in a cave or something. Um, I'll get a picture up of that. But uh, yeah, uh, but I actually don't have a, a New Age Megatron to put it on, but I actually have an even better use for it. And that's obviously as a pizza cutter. Come on now. You gotta admit, this, that, this is what this is for, right? I'm right. I'm right. Alright, enough fooling around. If you didn't know already, now you know that New Age did in fact retool this figure into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Or, you know, transforming fast assemblies of them. So, anyway. But we'll take a look at these figures and check them out, uh, because that's what we're here for. And... I really like this. I like how both of these guys turned out, honestly. Um, his head sculpt. I love this little head sculpt. <laughs> it's very brawn. Very, I'm coming to kick your ass. You know? Very much so. Beautiful blue eyes and silver face paint. Uh, his head is just on a swivel, so you get 360 and that's it. But... Seeing as his head is also, you know, the engine block of his uh, vehicle mode, uh, I can forgive that. So, uh, I remember when this figure came out, a lot of people were complaining about this color being wrong. But, you know, in a show filled with animation errors, particularly color changes, incorrect colors all the time, uh, I don't really have a problem with a little bit of his other color being there, especially since this is... The hood of the car so no problems with that you know and even then you've still got all this nice brawn detail here that they've picked out that looks exactly like you looked in the show so you know i don't know people always find something to complain about right uh but anyway so we covered the head his torso is on a waist swivel there so you get 360 just a ball joint here on the arm so you get all the usual range of motion there. It is on a hinge due to transformation, so you can get some movement there. Proposing if you want to, that's nice. Uh, elbow ball, so you know what's going on there. No wrist rotation, they fold down as you've already seen. Legs, just on ball joints as well. A little bit of wiggly there at the joint itself. He does have a thigh cut there. Knees, Right at 90 degrees. Got some paint on his knee pads. That looks cool. Nice break up there of all the green. And I should point out that all of this from the knee down is actually die cast as well. So uh, it doesn't really look like it if you really think about it. But trust me, it is. So definitely gives this little figure some uh, good stability for sure. Um, you get that ankle rocker as far as that goes you get toe uh nowhere really i mean it moves a little bit due to transformation but nothing really that you're gonna be able to use but i, I think he looks pretty good i think this is a pretty cool mode I'll, i don't have a problem with this backpack i think it looks fine and natural for him um so yeah he looks really good definitely a good looking brawn with some nice Materials, colors, paints, articulation. You know, the joints, I mean, obviously are a little bit outdated, I guess, if you want to put it that way, as far as these ball joints. But, you know, it is what it is. I think they're very good representations. But we'll look at out back here real quick here, just so you guys can see some of the detail on him. Love his head sculpt as well. Um, I will point, go ahead and point out, I've only had this happen with him once, but this piece is just on a little uh, tab, tabbed into the back here. So it has f randomly fallen off once, but it goes right back in there, and I mean, it's not going anywhere right now. So uh, it happened with one of the Ninja Turtles too, I think Michelangelo, a couple times. So just something to be aware of. I haven't had it with, happen with Braun yet, so. But um, yeah, got some nice, very nice outback detail here. Again, love the head sculpt. And uh, he looks like Outback. I mean, there's really not a whole lot else to say. 
as far as that goes. So looking good. So let's get actually, yeah, let's go ahead and get some size comparisons for you guys on these guys. Here they are with a few fellow New Age figures with some Magic Square Autobots. And I still think that scale works pretty well, in my opinion. Um, I think it's about where you would expect them to have to be. They are still mini bots, still. Remember that. So here they are with some Iron Factory figures. So you can see how that works out. And a few more general size comparisons a three and three quarter inch action figure, a Lego figure, and a mini mate figure. All right, let's get this guy transformed. And because I forgot to show it to you, and because they are limited somewhat, there's your kicking full splits. All right, so you're going to start here, and this backpack part just tabs into the back of his head here, so you can just lift up on it a little bit and then pull the head up. And you're going to pull the head free there. And you can just go ahead and fold it. Down, however, out of the way for the moment. So we'll come here to his waist, and even though you saw where that tabs into there, that's just for some extra posability. I forgot to show that off too, sorry. <laughs> um, but you're going to take this whole part right here at his waist and just fold it down on that hinge. I'm going to go ahead and turn these panels up before I forget to, because I usually do. And then you're going to rotate the waist. 180. All right, so here's the really fun part with transforming these guys. So your arms are going to hinge in like so, okay? And you're actually going to turn, sorry, you're going to turn the, this part goes this way and then make sure this is turned this way so you can go like this, okay? Do the same thing on this side. Just make sure you got the window on the outside. And so here's where it gets tricky. So you've got these tabs right here. And this little piece comes up under the backpack. And they have to fit in here. And while you're doing that, you have to fit the arms underneath all of this backpack. So it can take a little bit of finagling, not only to get it down, but to get this piece tabbed in so you know i don't you're just gonna have to push and mess with it a little bit you know this plastic's pretty good so i'm not really concerned about breaking anything but once you get started you're good i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm so close so close to getting it in there all right, there's one of them. Usually if you get one, the other one's super easy. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just getting it started like that. It it really is kind of a pain. So anyway, so yeah. So just tab everything together like that once you've got that started. Okay. Now, make sure that's aligned the right way. And you're going to take his legs and just sort of bend them at the knees. And they tell you to turn them this way and then you can start undoing them so you can just fold the ankle the feet on this ankle rocker here and you're going to split open his legs like so and they just tab you can see right here and here and then just rotate them that way and you want the leg to be able to go underneath here like so. So just rotate it until you get it the right way. That's all I can really tell you. Like so. And you've got tabs here on the fender into the this notch on the grill. And there's another one right back here, as you can see there. Just tab in into place. You can push his toes up on that little hinge. 
and just repeat the process over here. And there's a tab here to kind of hold this bag part together. And there you go. So I'll get him cleaned up and get Outback transformed. And we'll take a closer look at both of them. So here are Braun and Outback in their vehicle modes. And I think they look pretty good. Definitely very G1 cartoon. You know, not so much the old toy. Uh, I know the old toy was based on the uh, old Suzuki Jimny back in the 80s, which looked very Jeep-like. But these guys, especially Braun, I don't know if we ever really see Outback's vehicle mode in the cartoon. He was only in like three or four episodes. But this is definitely very, uh, very Braun looking for the cartoon, other than this shade of green. It's a lot lighter than he kind of was in the cartoon most of the time. But otherwise, the colors look pretty spot on, in my opinion. Um, we'll just go ahead and take a quicker look at some of it. Here's his kneecaps here, or knee pads, whatever you want to call them. Silver there to break that up. The wheels are, do you have metal rims right here on all these? Obviously, they roll just fine. Silver paint on the grill looks really good. All of these windows are painted metallic blue. Looks very nice. Got a little bit of silver on the floodlights there on the roof. And yeah, looking pretty good. Not the best from the back. He's got visible hands just hanging out there, but you can really only see them from the back. Otherwise, it's not bad at all. So yeah, definitely a fan. Here's Outback. Now you'll notice too that they do have different grills. Outback actually has a winch molded on his. So he cannot use the drill bit like Braun can. But black paint on the windows actually. Silver there on the floodlights again. Other than that, just different colors. But looks pretty good. Now as far as those metallic pieces go, I do want to point out real quick that these two actually are only on circular ports here. And this one is actually a square. I don't know if you can see it there. So while he can hold this perfectly fine in robot mode, this is the only one that will work here. So if you're trying to give him a pincher on the front, you're out of luck. But that's very cool. That's very iconic. So very cool to be able to recreate that. And he rolls fine with it still. So... As far as their other accessories, you can give them their gas cans. And they just plug into their foot right there. And there you go. So, to complete the car look, the sort of rugged off-road look. As far as their weapons, again, I've got them swapped. They can just hold them, so you can port that there if you want to do that. And very important to be able to do that with Outback, since he's kind of known for that with his original toy. It would have been nice if it was it could somehow fit here in the spare tire, but that's okay. Not a big deal. So, yeah, very cool. I think they both look really cool. Let's do some size comparisons with new age cars right there with an iron factory car with some die cast cars from Mattel Hot Wheels. So there's your size comparisons, general look there. So, final thoughts on these two. I think they're great little figures. I'm a big fan of this mold, obviously, by me having the turtle versions as well. Um, but they're definitely a recommendation for me if you are either fans of the characters or if you're just, you know, 
um, a completionist and you want representations of these characters. Um, my only negatives would be the potential face falling off and just, you know, the difficulty and, you know, getting this part tabbed together to get them into alternate mode. Otherwise, I think they're excellent. I think the articulation is great for what they are. I think they look great. They're very G1 looking and yeah, I'm definitely a fan of them. So that's going to do it for the review. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Later.